This is Professor Vancello, and this is a Windows Forms application that I'm going to be adding a database to, a SQL Server database file. I'm going to go to Data Sources, Add New Source, choose a database, uh, Data Set, create a new connection, and you'll see there are different options for what kinds of databases you can add in Visual Studio. I'm going to choose a SQL Server database file, the Northwind database. I'll have a link to that. I want you to pay attention to this uh, connection string setting and this message that pops up. You want to say yes to that to copy that file into your project. This screen allows you to choose which database objects you want in your project. You don't want to add more objects than you need uh, in case the database is being used by other applications or just to uh, improve the performance of the, of the application. So we've added a couple tables from the database. I just chose customers and orders. And in the data sources window, you'll see a little icon next to the customers uh, table. that so looks like a grid with a little database thing in front of it. You can drag that to your design surface and it's gonna add several things to uh, your form. Now at the bottom, you'll see it added a data set, it added a binding source, table adapter, uh, table adapter manager and a binding navigator. The data set is like the go between um, between your program and, and the database. The binding source is what's connecting this data grid view control to that table. The navigator is this area at the top that allows you to scroll through the records. You see I just deleted a couple of records and I number of records went down from 91 to 89. But when I run this program again, you'll see that there's still 91 records there. And that can be confusing when you're first uh, learning database programming. And the reason for that behavior is because we didn't work on the actual database when we were debugging this program. Uh, you'll see that one of the properties of the database file is that it gets copied every time the program runs. Visual Studio assumes that when you're debugging, you're just working on your program. You don't want to actually change the data in the database. But you can modify that behavior by telling it uh, to only copy if newer. When you do that and you run your program, the changes that you make will persist between times that you run it, even when you're in debug. Once you release it, there will be there'll be different behavior for that as well. We'll take a look at the folders and the files that are at work here in, in Windows. In the, your solution folder, you'll have a uh, project folder. And within that project folder, you'll have the database file that you copied over when you started the program. Then in the debug folder, that's the one that gets copied over when you, when you hit F5 or, or start debugging in Visual Studio. Okay, now that we have that uh, behavior explained, let's take a look at the dataset.xsd file. And there's a lot of useful things you can do here. It shows the relationship between any tables that you have. It shows uh, the queries. And you see there's a way to add a query here. But I'm going to show you another way to add a query using a little arrow at the top right of this data grid view control. All right, that little arrow does a lot of fun stuff when it comes to database programming with lots of different types of controls. The thing I want to point out about this view is that it shows you a sample. All right, and this where clause, uh, I'm not going to go into the depths of, of SQL in this video, but the where clause is, uh, is important to add functionality to your, your program. So just basing it off of this example, it says where column name. The column name is one of the one of the things that's on that top row. So I'm going to choose country, and the parameter name. This can be any name at all that you want to give it. And right, what I want to do is have a have a way to choose a country and then only see the customers that are from that country. I'm going to give this new query a name so it doesn't mess up my other query. I'm going to call it fill by country. And what that automatically did for me was add at the top of my form this text box. And I could customize it further, but for now, it's got a label, it's got a text box, and it's got a button that says fill by country. I, I could modify all that, but just to see that it works, I'm going to type in one of the countries, click that button, and you'll see that, in fact, my data grid view is now just showing the customers that are from that country. 
But if you don't know or you don't want to type, it would be nice if we could do a, a combo box that shows all the different countries and just have to select one of the countries from the combo box. That'll keep us from having to spell anything and be faster and be easier. Uh, there's that little uh, arrow at the top right once the control is selected and we want to use data bound items. And for now, I'll just choose my existing table adapter and I'll choose the country field. Let's see if that works. I'm going to do one little thing at a time, trying to keep it working as I go. Okay, so that did work. It's showing me all the countries, but it's showing me 91 different countries. Well, not different countries. It's basically just showing me every country that's in that table. And I don't really want to do that. What I would rather do is just show me the distinct countries. So I'm going to right click in my dataset XSD file and I'm going to add a new table adapter. And you can just type the SQL here if you know it. Or you can use the query builder, which gives you some graphical user interface uh, steps to follow. And I'm going to choose which table I want to work with. I do want to work with the customer's table still and I want to choose just the country. I don't need anything else. And I want just the distinct countries. I only I don't want all the countries. And the way I can do that in SQL, you can see it still says 91 right there. That's not what I want. I want just one of each that's there. And I can do that just by typing the keyword distinct. Okay, now you see I only get 21 records, and that's what I want. I'm getting one, I'm getting the unique countries. Right? So I'm going to just keep hitting next, next, finish. You see I've added something to my XSD. And that means when I click on this little arrow next to my combo box, I'm going to be able to change the source of that data. I'm going to change it to that new table adapter. The table adapter is kind of like a table in the database, but it's what your, your program interacts with. And now I can see just the, uh, I can see all those different countries. Choosing one doesn't update my data grid view though. That'd be nice. That's really what we want is the data grid view just to show the customers from that country. So I'm going to double click that combo box, which is going to create this event handler for selected index changed. And I'm just going to borrow the code from this button click to see what code happens when that button's clicked. I'm double clicking it. And I'm looking in the code. And I'm just going to copy what was in that tool strip button click. And we'll take a closer look at what's actually happening when that button's clicked. First, it's within a try, just in case anything goes wrong, it won't crash the program. And what's happening is the table adapter for the data grid view is doing a fill by, and we're passing in the Northwind data set, the customer's table adapter, and we're passing an argument of the text that's in that text box. So the only thing that we want to do different is we don't want to do the text that's coming from the text box. We want to do the text that's in the combo box. And so we're going to type in the name of our combo box and look at what um, properties we have. And there's selected index, there's selected item, there's selected text, selected value. So you might have to look this up. You might want, need to do trial and error. Uh, selected item seems like it would make sense, but we get a squiggly. It actually tells you that it wants a string. So we can just add a, a two string to the end of that and see if our squiggly goes away. And it does, but the actual uh, property that we, we do want to make this work is going to be selected value. But in order for it to work, we got to make one other modification on our design view. Hitting that little arrow again, we want the value member to be country. Now you can make these different things, and sometimes that makes sense when you're dealing with uh, a foreign key or something. We're not going to get into that right now, but just make sure the selected value is whatever you want, and that's going to pass in the argument for our query, and you see now our data grid view is updating uh, to show me just the customers from the country that I've chosen.